Hi guys, today we're going to be talking about seizures, the different kinds there are, what would they look like, what should you do as a nurse before, during, and after, and how to keep the patient safe, and different types of medications that can be given to control seizures with their side effects. Um, so yeah, let's start talking. So what is a seizure? So a seizure is an uncontrolled, sudden, exaggerated impulse of electrical activity. So a patient can have just a one-time seizure or maybe just a isolated seizure versus having epilepsy. So to be diagnosed with epilepsy, you need to have two or more seizures um, 24 hours or more apart, so spread apart from each other. Um, with no other signs or symptoms or any other findings that could explain the seizure. Um, versus patient having a seizure, there's a million reasons why. You could have a brain tumor, you could have hydrocephalus, increased um, cranial pressure, you can be hypoglycemic, metabolic abnormalities, hypomagnesia, hyponatremia, um, alcohol withdrawal, sleep deprivation, pregnancy, dehydration, stress, trauma, the list can go on, fever in children. Um, so just knowing that um, seizures can be an isolated injury or a patient can have a diagnosis of epilepsy where a seizure is a symptom of epilepsy. So there's two kinds of seizures. So we have generalized and focal partial. So generalized means it generally happens anywhere in the brain versus focal or partial means it's specific to one area of the brain that the seizure is occurring in. The kinds of generalized are a tonic, absence, and tonic-clonic. So tonic-clonic, also was called a grand mal seizure, is basically when you have rigid stiffening of the muscles, and you can hear a patient maybe shriek out or cry out just from everything tightening, um, followed by a rhythmic jerking motion of um, spasmings and relaxing. So rigidness, and then rhythmic jerking it would be a tonic-clonic. Um, the patient will have a positive LOC, so loss of consciousness, and they will possibly have incontinence occur during um, that time. We also can have an absent seizure where this typically happens in our pediatric population where they just kind of look like they're gazing off, daydr daydreaming, a little stargazed. Um, they have no postictal period, so this kind of seizure lasts just a couple seconds. Um, and they just go back to doing whatever activity they were doing, kind of just staring off and then go back to doing it. They don't even realize it happened. Um, it can be definitely mistaken for daydreaming in children. So just something to be aware about. And then a tonic. So we said tonic-clonic, right? So tonic was the rigid part. So if we have an atonic seizure, that means without rigidness, that means complete loss of muscle tone that patients drop into the floor. Um, so they really should be educating um, who they're with about the fact that they can have these seizures and what um, to do about it and things like that. They maybe should be walking with a helmet on, things like that, to protect their head since they can just drop at any second. Versus focal or partial, we said that's specific to one area of the brain. You can have a simple partial or a complex partial. So simple, let's keep it simple. You don't lose... Um, your sense of awareness, no loss of consciousness, you're still aware of your surroundings, right? Versus a complex partial, the loss of consciousness um, is minimally intact, but not 100%. Um, and these patients, so it's impaired, um, and they can have automatisms, which is basically a repetitive motion of either rubbing your hands together, pick, pulling at clothes, um, lip smacking, facial movements, things like that. So those are the two different types of seizures, categories, generalized and focal, and the types of seizures that fall into them and how to identify them visually. Um, next, if a patient has a sustained seizure, right? So what if maybe our patient, this is their, they're having a seizure and it's going on longer than five minutes, right? We're calling 911 because that's called status ep epilecticus. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Try my best. Um, so if it's longer than five minutes without a break, or if they're having back-to-back -back seizures without regaining consciousness, that's status epileptus, and we're calling 911, when do we call 911? So if that's happening, if it's a patient's first seizure, if the patient's having difficulty with respirations, or if an injury has occurred to this patient. If this patient has epilepsy, 
and they had a seizure, it lasted maybe a minute or two, they're alert, oriented, you know, postictal, but their, their respiration's okay, they're not having any injuries, this isn't their first seizure, we typically do not call 911 for that patient because there's nothing to be done for them, they have a seizure disorder. So let's talk about um, our patient. So we have a patient who is in our hospital who um, had a seizure at home. They're at risk for having another, right? So what are we doing for them? We're going to make sure we have working oxygen in our room. We're going to make sure we have working um, O2 equipment like a BBM at our disposal. We're going to make sure that our suction's working, right? Um, because those patients can lose the ability to manage oral secretions, put them at risk for um, airway compromise, so we need working suctioning. Our bed should be in the lowest position in case that patient were to have a fall out of bed or anything like that due to a seizure. They don't have a long way to fall. Lastly, any patient admitted to the hospital on seizure precautions, whether they had one or not, needs to have padding on the side rails, whether that is hospital-acquired ones or you are made doing a makeshift one, with blankets, anything like that. It is huge in protecting them from injuries. Um, next, what questions do we have for our patient, right? So we're gonna ask them, how often do they have seizures? Do they ever have an aura before a seizure? So we haven't talked about auras yet. Auras are basically like maybe a weird smell, smell they like, smell they don't like, a feeling, deja vu, butterflies. It's really different for everyone or just like an impending anxiety. They know they're going to have a seizure. So some patients don't have one at all and they have a seizure. Some patients have an aura before they have a seizure. So just ask them about that and, you know, what do they experience, experience so you can be on the lookout for it or know what they're talking about if they report feeling it. Um, what type of seizures do they typically have? Do they have absent seizures? Do they have tonic seizures? You know, what is their history? What about their med compliance? Are they taking their medications the way they should be? Are they missing doses, overdoing doses? What if they have questions on that? And so we want to always educate them that obviously med compliance is the best, right? We should be taking our medications when they're due, exactly when they're due every day. But if we missed a dose or we're unsure maybe, we're going to miss a dose. We're not going to double up if we're unsure. We would rather have a patient have a missed dose than having medication toxicity from double dosing. So if they're ever unsure if they missed a dose for the day, just leave it alone. Educate them that. And then we want to know what their triggers are, right? So maybe some patients for epilepsy, it's flashing lights, um, certain sounds, being in a certain environment, doing a certain activity, those type of things, certain colors can trigger um, an epileptic event. So just ask them what are their triggers. Um, and then, so let's pretend our patient just started seizing, right? So we're going to help them be lowered to the ground. We're going to guide their movements, right? We're going to move everything dangerous away from them. We're never going to restrain them, but we're going to be guiding their movements. If maybe they had positive head strike, right, where we're going to hold C-spine for them, have another patient come, and we're going to immediately lay them over to their left side. The left side is just the recovery position, so I always say left side, but onto their side at least. And this is for airway management. We're going to be timing the seizure to make sure it's less than the five minutes. Otherwise, we know we need help. We need um, emergency medication to stop the seizure. We're going to be noting the um, characteristics of the seizure, is it rigid followed by jerky movements? And we're gonna know that's tonic-clonic. Did our patient just immediately drop to the ground and that was maybe an atonic? Were they you know, maintaining their level of consciousness? Did they have bowel or bladder incontinence? Things like that. We want to assess their pupils, their airway, keep their head safe. We never wanna put anything in their mouth. I think we all know that by now. Um, and we just want to be calm and talk to them, talk them through and assure them that you're there and monitor their respirations afterwards. They can be postictal anywhere from five to 30 minutes afterwards. And that's kind of just like days confused. It takes a lot of a person when they have a seizure. So we talked about their muscles, um, the tonic part being super rigid. So they might have soreness and things like that just from the spasming. Um, and then we want to just tell them that they're probably going to be fatigued for the next one or two days. Um, patients who have epilepsy should be managing their stress, monitoring to, so they don't get infections, fevers, illnesses, things like that, um, just because that can be a trigger and put them at risk. So we want to tell them to try to limit their stress and things like that. Um, so we talked about emergency management. If our patient were to have one, right, greater than five minutes, what medications would we give them in the emergency room? So midazolam which is Versed, and then Lorazepam, which is Ativan, we can give our patient. 
other medications that we're required to know for our test are going to be carbamazepine. And so the signs and symptoms you would look out for are going to be ataxia, anemia, liver damage, visual changes. Um, we're going to monitor the CBC count for the anemia, I'm sure, and behavioral changes. Next is, I'm sorry for my pronunciation, levotricitam, and that is ataxia, loss of appetite, cough, runny nose, fatigue. So I'm a weirdo, and I'm going to remember this by Levy, right? So I'm going to see L-E-V-E, and I'm going to be like Levy. He has a cold, so he has loss of appetite, he has a cough, he has a runny nose, and he has a fatigue, and that's just I'm going to think levy. I'm going to think this patient has a cold, and that's how I'm going to see my signs and symptoms. Phenobarbital, so that's high sedation. So if you have a patient who you gave them the Ativan, you gave them the Versed, you gave them the, enough doses of it, and they're not breaking the seizure, nothing will break the seizure, we're going to put them in a like a medically induced coma. Um, so and that's kind of the phenobarbital. So it's just super increased sedation, impairment of the... Um, cognitive impairment, drowsiness, things like that. Um, phenotoin. So I think phony Tony. So phony Tony has a gingival hyperplasia, so we need to do meticulous mouth care on him. He has a myelosuppression, increases the life of his Coumadin, ataxia, and in high levels, nystagmus. So you can think like a drunk guy for the ataxia, who has like a one droopy eye for the nystagmus, who just has like a mouth full of like a gummy mouth, he needs to brush his teeth. That will help you think of it. That's what helps me think of it. And then just valproic acid, tremor, hair loss, liver function, um, tests should be done, CBC should be done, and they'll have thrombocytopenia, CBC. And that's it. I hope that this helped you. The medications are difficult. I suggest what I do is I cut out all of my signs and symptoms and I cut out my medication and I just have to match them. So medications, unfortunately, sometimes can be a memorization tactic. And then obviously, you know, the other stuff. So if I know causes gingival hyperplasia, then I know meticulous mouth care. That's not something I need to memorize. That's a nursing intervention. I know if something affects the liver function, then me being the nurse, I'm probably going to assess their LFTs. I'm going to assess their CBC and things that I know that happen from the liver. So maybe jaundice, things like that, that you would just know as a nurse. But some of the adverse effects you just have to memorize. And so I suggest cutting them out, pasting them together, and just keep doing it until you it becomes second danger. Come up with little funny things. That's what I do. And that's it. I hope this helped you guys with seizures.